All right. Meditation priest for equality. Is that what we want? Yeah. The Inclusive Bible, Job 12, verses 7 through 10. <clears throat> but turn to the animals and let them teach you. The birds of the air will tell you the truth. Listen to the plants of the earth and learn from them. Let the fish of the sea become your teachers. Who among all these does not know that the hand of Yahweh has done this? In God's hand is the soul of every living thing. In God's hand is the breath of all humankind. Thank you so much. And we're going to skip our 12-step program for ecologic civilization, but we, weren't, we are not going to skip our invocation and prayer to Mother Earth. Our dear, dear mother, daily provider, earth be your name. The time has come to honor you, to know you and to show our love. You give us each day our daily grain, kissed by the sun and kissed by the rain. and there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, hey. it makes me feel so much better. How about you, duckies? Oh, soon you're going to be able to see how they become prayerful and they love the music. It's just so awesome. Okay, and then we have to... Oh, Gabriel and the angels. Angels, welcome. In this fine sanctuary. Pure and holy. Right and true with thanksgiving will be a living sanctuary for you. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as white as snow, his eyes. The angels and the animals like it ready and all So, um, uh, yeah, um, we uh, have news from the John Cobb Echo Farm. 
What is a wall? I don't know. What's our news? <laughs> Not too much. Um, we had a I don't quiet know. Thanksgiving. Yeah, we had a quiet Thanksgiving. We, we got our Christmas decorations out of the shed yesterday, and we we're going to go get a Christmas tree maybe on Tuesday. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> you got a visitor, didn't you? Was Leslie there? Leslie was here. That was, I think, two weekends ago, and that was fun. And then, uh, were you here, Martha? Because we did a service, yeah, with her um, with her friend Tim, who is a musician. So that was fun. I don't know. You know, uh, there's a, a homeless guy who was living here. And um, I think the greatest, most brilliant thing I ever did is I found him a fantastic apartment for $650. And he got himself a job. And he's uh, riding his bike. And uh, at any rate, can you imagine that? I mean, it's a really nice room in a really nice house and he can walk to work. So anyway, he came, we celebrated his 34th birthday yesterday. That was kind of fun. And uh, yeah. So if any of you are uh, are gonna be like me, you know, uh, when you, when you, I don't know, you know, you, you can't find any place to live, you can come live here. And then if I drive you crazy, you can go down the street and live in a beautiful house for $650 a month. There's no, I can't even believe it, it's so great. Okay, so, um, all right. I'm gonna go check on uh, Cynthia. Okay, you're gonna let them all out, I bet you, that's okay. Well, I so, don't wanna let anybody out, Okay. I also Okay, so let's uh, divvy up this. Hi, Kevin. Welcome. Let's divvy up this Taze, okay? Okay, so. <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and be still. Be. The earth must not be injured. The earth must not be destroyed. The medieval Rhineland visionary Hildegard of Bingen got away with worshiping Mother Earth in the midst of running her Benedictian Abbey because she, show, she showed us, she showed her to us <laughs> through the church approved lens of Mother Mary and Mother Sophia. Hildegard was smitten with the creator and enamored by every element of creation. Her mysticism is intimate, erotic even. She coined the term viriditas to evoke the lush, extravagant, moist, and verdant quality of the divine, manifesting as the greening power that permeates all that is. The life-giving energy is imbued with distinctively feminine quality. Hildegard writes, the earth is at the same time mother. She is mother of all that is natural, mother of all that is human. She is mother of all, for contained in her are the seeds of all. Bye-bye, Lulee, Lulee. 
Um, <clears throat> this is from Job. And um, it's about the animals. But turn to the animals and let them teach you. The birds of the air will tell you the truth. Listen to the plants of the earth and learn from them. Let the fish of the sea become your teachers. Who among you all does not know that the hand of Yahweh has done this? In God's hand is the soul of every living thing. In God's hand is the breath of all humankind. Angels we have heard on high sweetly singing through the night and the mountains in reply echoing their brave delights Gloria in excels this day read from Psalm 103. We, we last no longer than grass, live no longer than a wildflower, one gust of wind and we're gone, never to be seen again. Yet your love lasts from age to age for those who revere you, Yahweh, as does your goodness to your children's children and to those who keep your covenant and remember to obey your precepts. You have established your throne in the heavens and your reign extends over everything. Bless Yahweh, you angels, you powers who do God's bidding, attentive to every word of command. Bless Yahweh, you heavenly host, you faithful ones who enforce God's will. Bless Yahweh, all creation to the far reaches of God's reign. Bless Yahweh, my soul. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing through the night, and the mountains in reply, echoing their brave delight. Okay, now it was the turn of Zech Zechariah's priestly class to serve, and as he was fulfilling his priestly office before God, it fell to him by lot, according to priestly usage, to enter the sanctuary of our God and offer incense. While the full assembly of people was praying outside at the time of day when the incense was offered, an angel of our God appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was deeply disturbed upon seeing the angel and was overcome with fear. The angel said to him, don't be frightened, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son whom you'll name 
John. He will be your joy and delight, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of our God. He must never drink wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. And he will bring many of the children of Israel back to their God most high. He will go before God as a forerunner, forerunner in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the rebellious to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for our God. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife, too, is, if, is advanced in age. The angel replied, I am Gabriel, who stands before God. I was sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. But because you have not trusted my words, you will be mute, unable to speak, until the day these things take place. They'll all come true in due season. Oh, come, oh, come, With your captive children dwell Give comfort to our exiles here And to the aching heart bid cheer Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come within his love to dwell. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and with your captive children dwell. Give comfort to all exiles here, and to the aching heart bid cheer. Atheism is not simply a set of ideas, but a new paradigm, a different way of being in the world. In short, a new religion. The dominant forms of spirituality in both the East and the West have neglected the earth. Although the Indian story included the birth and decay of the worlds, this did not lead to concern for the preservation of the earth. These cosmic changes were beyond the influence of human beings. The East did not separate human beings far from the other animals, but this acknowledgement of kinship has not led in most instances to a notable cultural sensitivity to the well-being of these other animals or to preservation of their habitat. The Western story originated in an account of the creation of the world by God and God's recognition of its goodness. But Western reasoners attended more to the fact that God gave sovereignty over the earth to human beings. This was taken to justify exploitation of the other creatures and a preoccupation with human history. The continuance of the earth, much as it is, at least until divinely ordained, was taken for granted. It is interesting that the current cosmological story told by astronomy is quite different from both. Oh, no, no, blessed mother, thou shalt be. All generations laud and honor thee. Thy son shall be Emmanuel, thy seers foretold. Most highly favored lady, Gloria. For no a blessed mother thou generations lord and honor thee thy son shall be Emmanuel thy seas foretold 
most highly favored lady, Gloria. I sought to identify the people who had been most influential in the life of the planet, who turned out to be the founders of the various religions. They all basically agreed that love was the most important ingredient that became my belief, but it was only a belief. I didn't know it. One day when I was sitting alone on in my flat, sipping milk, milky coffee and trying to grapple with the situation, I had the extraordinary cosmic experience of knowing that God was within me. God was no longer a belief, but a reality. And I was a part of that reality. I experienced myself as divine. I was no longer a lonely misfit, but a part of a wonderful, jo wonderful joyous, loving universe. This experience probably lasted only a few seconds, but my life was forever changed by it. I feel felt reborn and able to cope with anything. All is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant soul, tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round your virgin mother and child, holy infant soul, tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. This is a reading uh, from uh, Thomas Berry. Although we must respond critically with these spontaneities to assure their authentic expression, we have ultimately no other source of guidance that possesses such inherent authenticity or which can function so effectively as a norm of reference in our actions. In earlier times, these spontaneities were considered as revealing natural law, the ultimate inner norm of guidance for human conduct since they are the human phase of th those instincts that enable a bird to build its nest and find its food and discover its migratory route. Ultimately, these instincts come from that mysterious course from where the universe itself came in, being as articulated entities acting together in some ordered context. What enabled the formless energies to merge into such a fantastic variety of expression in shape, color, scent, feeling, thought, and imagination? As with any aesthetic work, we attribute it especially to the imaginative capacities of the artist. For only out of imaginative power does any grand creative work take shape. Since imagination functions most freely in dream vision, we tend to associate creativity also with the dream experience. The dream comes about precisely through the uninhibited, spontaneous, spontaneities uh, of which we are speaking. All of them, meaning words of creative imagination, derive from the visionary power 
that is experienced most profoundly when we are immersed in the depths of our own being and of the cosmic order itself in the dream world that unfolds with us in our sleep or in the visionary moments that seize upon us in our waking hours. And this is from The Dream of the Earth by Thomas Berry. We believe in things that we cannot see. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? God is all around. Buddha sat at the he is our breast, and it's not too late. We believe in things that we cannot see. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? God is all around, but it's at the day. Allah, he is our breast, and it's not too late. We believe in things that we cannot see. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? God is all around, but is at the gate. Allah, he is our prince, and it's not too late. The Secret Life of Plants by Peter Tompkins and Chris Bird. A ready chief to squat. Animals are just making me laugh. There's a chair for you there. And lives on a sheep farm in South Korea. Spent a couple of weeks as the guest of Rama Mohan Maharsha, Mahar, Maharshi at his ashram at the foot of the holy hill, Arunachala, famed in Hindu mythology for many centuries. Every evening when the Maharshi would go out for a walk, seconds of his crossing, the threshold of his residence, cattle tied up in stalls in the nearby village, about half a mile away, would struggle to get out of their bonds. Released by the villagers, they careered Kareem along the road to accompany the old man on his walk, followed by all the dogs and children of the village. Before the procession had gone very far, wild, anim wild animals, says McInnes, joined it from the jungle, including several varieties of snakes. Thousands of birds appeared, almost blotting out the sky, including tiny tits, huge kites, and other birds of prey. Heavy-winged vultures all flying in harmony around the Maharshi on his walk. When he returned to his room, said McInnes, all the birds, animals, and children would quietly disappear. How the winds are laughing, they laugh with all their minds. Laugh and laugh the whole day through, and half the summer's night. Dona, 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 dona. Dona, 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 How the winds are laughing, they laugh with all their minds. Laugh and laugh the whole day through, and half the summer's night. Dona, dona. i 
midnight Don't I don't know 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 I want to tell you that as we were going through, I could just glimpse out my window to the west and the, the sun is going through gray clouds. So we have gray and gold and perfectly lovely, the little glimpse I get. And the <laughs> service is going beautifully with it. I just want to <laughs> Thank you, Karen. This is uh, the second reading from Secret Life of the <clears throat> There will have to be an increase in sensitivity of humanity to the point where the sacrifice of animals to sport becomes wholly intolerable, as well as the mass slaughter of animals in total terror in abattoirs, slaughterhouses. Better food must be more easily obtainable in such abundance that half-starved and semi-brutalized men no longer need to eat meat or demand work of half-dead, diseased, and suffering animals. In other words, we must cease to be a planet of jailers and chain gang drivers, as everything is interdependent, says McGinnis. It follows that what wheat affects one form of life must affect all other forms as well. If we deliberately cause suffering and disease in others' lives, we increase our own suffering and disease. All creation, says McGinnis, is affected by the disease inflicted on laboratory animals in when he believes to be a future and for a doomed attempt to combat illness. Let's see. All creation is tormented through the ghastly agonies which vivisectionist scientific research on animals inflicts on helpless animals. Any relief of illness supposed to be removed by knowledge gained at the expense of such agonies, will, says McGinnis, be paid for many times over an increased suffering in some other part of the whole. All creation suffers when plants in their millions are burnt by chemical weed killers. Just as every creative thing takes a knock for every victim of war, Not there for yet. every inmate tortured in concentration camp. So every creative thing takes a knock when a rabbit dies of human-induced myxomatosis, or as a plant dies in agony, deliberately deceased with toxic chemicals. All of life, says McInnes, is one. There is no exception. I hear a call. Now will I answer. Forsake my own. To serve another. No darkness falls. Stay a believer. I hear a call, now will I answer. Fill up this life that grows more hollow. Join. I see a light. Now will I follow? I hear a call. Now will I answer? Forsake my all to serve another. Though darkness falls, me. 
a believer, I hear a call, now will I answer, I see my remember the words and how this goes i hear a call now will i answer for sing my arm to serve another no darkness for stay a believer i hear a call now will i answer amen we can go into our prayer time nancy would you like to begin us at the virtual wailing wall okay Dear Holy One, we come to confess, confess and to ask for forgiveness. We know that we have done things we should not have done and not done things we should have done. We ask you to forgive us. We ask that you guide us in learning how to forgive others as well as ourselves. Amen. God, grant that I may always allow myself to be guided by you, always follow your plans and perfectly accomplish your holy will. Grant that in all things great and small today and all the days of my life, I may do whatever you will require of me. Help me respond to the slightest promptings of your grace so that I may be your trustworthy instrument for your honor. May your will be done in time and in eternity by me, in me, and through me. Amen. And let us lift up all those in need, all those names of which we'd like to pray for. David Reed. Tony. Ukraine family. Walt. My granddaughter. May we join in a silent prayer for our common home, our habitat, our Mother Earth. Our Mother, Father God, who is within us. We celebrate, celebrate your, your many names. Your wisdom so can come. Your will, will be done, be done unfolding, unfolding from depths. the depths within us. Each day you give us all that we all need. need. Remind us of our limits, our limits and we let go. go. Support, you support us, us in our power. We act, we with, act with courage. For you are, the, are the dwelling place within us, our and the power around us, and the salvation among us now and forever. Amen. Amen. John Cobb, if you will share our closing prayer from the movie Don't Look Up. Dear Mother, Father, God, you, the God of passionate love, we ask your grace tonight, despite our pride, your forgiveness, despite our doubt. Most of all, we ask for your love to see us through these dark times. May we face whatever is to come in your divine will, with courage and open hearts of acceptance. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God go before you. May her grace and peace abound. May her spirit live within you. May her love wrap you round. May her blessings remain with you always. May you walk on holy ground. May we all go.
go in peace.